And now we have Marco Massenzio. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name right from Cruz, who is uh, deep into self-driving cars. And now he's going to talk about uh, that thing, but apply to cloud infrastructure with Crossplane. So uh, lessons learned. This is my interpretation of a talk that I haven't heard yet, but lessons learned from self-driving cars apply to self-driving infrastructure. Mar Marco, you, your too. floor. Good morning, everyone. By the way, you pronounce it perfectly, too. Thank you so much. Uh, let me find the share screen button. Uh, there you are. All right. Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Marco Massenzio. This is my uh, my bio. The in the terms of LLMs, that was generated by uh, ChatGPT, who clearly <laughs> likes me a lot. Um, I'm a principal engineer in the infrastructure team at Cruise. Um, that's my LinkedIn profile and blog, if you guys need to reach out to me. I'll go through um, this talk. It's, um, it's a very brief one. <clears throat> and I'll, um, I'll describe how we uh, adopted Crossplane uh, about um, eight, nine months ago. Um, to build an abstraction layer on, on top of our uh, Google Cloud resources and, um, and how we uh, essentially moved from Terraform, so all the topics that have been covered today, from our or, um, Terraform repositories to um, supporting um, a, uh, our cloud services and, and deploying our resources in, in GCP. Um, so uh, how did we do that? Um, so we built essentially what amounts to be a, uh, we call it Cruise Infra. It's a set of um, the Kubernetes CRDs, which implement the um, cross-plane compositions and, and XRDs, and, and essentially describe a set of primitives um, that allow us to, allow us, our users or the development teams um, to quickly deploy uh, the what they need for uh, for their services in terms of cloud resources it can be a database, um, a Redis cache, um, pub subtopics. Um, what we we've been using until now, what we're still largely using for a number of services, has been uh, been uh, uh, Terraform modules. Um, now Terraform is perfectly fine; um, it doesn't really have any major problem. Um, but what we found was because the development was distributed across many many repositories and many many service teams, that it was um, challenging to enforce a consistency of standards, a consistency of approaches. And, and so the, the, the deployment, the configuration of, of the infrastructure um, became very fragmented. And, uh, and also um, enforcing policies across all these, these modules was challenging, um, making sure that whatever improvement uh, um, we, we adopt was, was, was very challenging. So we decided to um, adopt Crossplane um, about um, towards the end of last year <clears throat> in a, as a way to achieve two main goals, as everybody does the, these things. And one was to save time, essentially make it easier for uh, a development team to uh, configure the cloud resources and, and deploy them and have them operational. Um, but also more importantly, what was more important to us was to make sure that all the best practices were uh, essentially embedded into the deployment. We, the developers would not be left um, guessing uh, how to um, deploy a spanner database in a way that wouldn't break um, under, under load. Um, and so, also, of course, the, um, the the benefit was to avoid code duplication, absolutely, and also something that both uh, you, Victor, and, and Kelsey mentioned: um, the abstraction of all the details around uh, the cloud resources and the Kubernetes details. We wanted to essentially make it easier for developers that may not be necessarily familiar, they may not have either the time or the inclination to become familiar with all the finer details to essentially move faster. So it was, it was, a, it was a dash for agility. So the, the way we did that um, essentially was to create these what they call primitives uh, or um, resources and that embody the uh, the values um, a, sub, a small subset of the Google resources, and and those are, have a very limited subset of um, options knobs for the development team to tweak uh, and also to to worry about, and um, and so that it's it's really it's truly it's, a, it's an opinionated framework, um, which essentially provides 
the, the developer the minimum amount of effort to get those uh, resources deployed. Um, it's important to understand that um, this is a, an important um, component for us to meet our needs for um, um, a much higher reliability and availability as well as scalability. As you probably guys have seen in the news, we're growing really rapidly, deploying across um, a large number of cities in over all, all the US. Um, the number of our cars, the um, AVs, we call them autonomous vehicles, um, is growing really fast. And we need to ensure a high level of service availability. We need to um, provide uh, five nines of availability to our services. While the cloud services do not impact the car drivability, so all the <laughs> driving decisions are, are made locally in the car, um, we still need to provide all the services to support our users and customers. And if they're not available, then we cannot provide a good service. So it's critical that for us that we are up all the time. So these are the resources. Um, the way one configures them, well, it won't surprise anyone. It's simple YAML. Um, that um, the example uses Helm um, to Helm chart to deploy a spanner database. It's about 12 lines of YAML, and that's pretty much all you need uh, to have a database that will serve you well across multiple regions um, with millions, billions of, um, of rows um, and nothing much else to worry about. Um, behind the scene, of course, there are a set of uh, configurations that we've um, defined, uh, default configurations that we define, that we make sure that our SRA team, uh, which <laughs> know really well the internals, um, can um, essentially enforce all the, the good, good practices. <clears throat> if you need a to access um, a pub sub uh, topic for subscription, well, these it's going to look really familiar. And that was also important for us to provide to the developers teams, our users, a very consistent, familiar um, interface so they don't really need to um, have their cognitive burden of having to learn yet, uh, something else um, and have to um, obsess over, OK, this, should this value be 15 or 25 or 0? Um, in this example, you can actually, you know, the one on the left is um, is works it's very simple it's what six lines of yaml and we give you a a topic in in gcp and there are a few more um, uh, options and knobs around retention and, and other other values but fairly limited um essentially just the, the, the minimum the amount of uh, essentially what we've seen that our customers uh, really need um, on the other hand, uh, you can have a subscription. And again, um, we define it in a way that you can either use very simply with a topic that's been created um, using Cruzinfa, our infrastructure, or you can use a topic that's been created by any other means, for example, via Terraform or even manually over via on the, on the console. Um, so as I mentioned, we try to reduce the amount of, I call it sprawl, in terms of configurations, knobs, settings, um, connection uh, um, connection values and connection details. Um, from a from the other side of the fence, if you really, from from your code to access um, these these resources again, it's very consistent. All the connection details um, are published to a Ashicorp Vault um, instance uh, at a fairly predictable, well known um, Vault path. And so that those connection details are available. Um, we may we use a project called Daytona. We developed it internally at Cruise, um, and then open source. That's the link to the GitHub repo um, that um, exposes a vault uh, secret, provided that you have all the permissions um, to have access to that secret, and then it publishes to your pod as a as an environment uh, variable. That makes it really easy to access from, from the code. Um, we've also been looking uh, into the Vault Secrets Operator. Um, probably we'll uh, adopt that in future. Um, does pretty much the same thing. Takes a Vault Secret and exposes it as a, as a config map to your pod. So um, very, very easy. Uh, on the right-hand side, you can see that's a, a good example to get a client. Um, the one at the top um, is, a, is a PubSub uh, client. The one at the bottom is a Spanner client. Um, pretty much identical. Again, the the goal is to lower the cognitive burden and also to uh, set ourselves up to build a, a higher level abstraction and libraries so that, again, it becomes much easier for us to 
um, ensure consistency across the whole code base. Um, the other great benefit, obviously, is that um, uh, any any bug fix, any um, improvement that we make on the platform immediately gets propagated to the, all the services. We don't have to go over 20 different repos to make the changes. It just happens in, in one place. OK, so how do we? Um, how do we do that? Um, I, this is just an example, a comparison of um, using Terraform um, versus using uh, Cruise Infra. Again, I want to stress the fact that Terraform works just fine. Um, in fact, it's used behind the scene by the outbound the GCP provider to um, to deploy the, the resources in, in, in GCP for us. Um, but the point here is that we, we, I'm trying to make in this slide is that it's much it's much easier. Um, there's a lot less code. There's a lot less one, uh, wandering and, and 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 guessing. And so I'm, I, this this keeps uh, the whole thing much simpler for us to to manage across the whole organization. Um, but enough of me talking, um, I will show you a brief video of how we do um, the, um, if I find the right window. So this is a brief video of my colleague Jimin and show you how we use Cruise Infra to deploy a spanner database um, in the cloud. I hope you can hear the audio. Let me know if you can. Hello, cannot. everyone. This is Jimin from Past Team. In this presentation, I would like to show you a demo about how to use Cruise X to quickly set up a cloud spanner database and how to make your application to interact with the database created through Cruise X. In this example, um, here is the Cruise Spanner DB, the Kubernetes resource that will be used to create the Cloud Spanner database. OK, now this Kubernetes Cruise Spanner database uh, DB has been created in the It just created, but it's not ready yet. That's because uh, it could take maybe two or three minutes for the resource to become ready. Because underneath, we create not only the database, but also the associated resource, such as uh, service account, service key, service account key, the IAM binding to simplify the integration process. So you can see that, OK, it shows up in the GCP council here, the example DB, which means, OK, the actual spanner database has been successfully created. OK, it becomes ready. So um, yeah, let's jump to the second part of this demo. In the second part, I would like to show you a demo about how to make your application interact with this uh, cloud spanner DB. So after this cruise spanner DB becomes ready, all of this spanner DB related information will be stored in the vault. You can see that, say, the database ID, project ID, as well as those credentials to access this DB will be stored here. Yeah, your app just need to consume this information and then you can connect to the, the database. And uh, yeah, here is the, the application itself. So basically, in this demo, I will show you how to uh, just just simply query that uh, database. And uh, uh, we will see the result is like connect to the Google Spanner if everything goes well. Yeah, yeah this is cluster for hosting the application and the make the deployment. OK, now it's succeed. Now, let's just curve the endpoint. Yeah, you can see that, OK, this uh, message still shows up connect to the Google Spanner. Yeah, which means the app is successfully connected to the, the database. All right, so that was a really quick, I was very <laughs> tight on time. Um, so I wanted to uh, just show you how it, it's fairly straightforward from a uh, 
from a developer's viewpoint um, to access a database. As I mentioned, all the connection details are available through Envar. You can connect and, and then you have access to a resource. Um, very quickly, I wanted to go. So as I said, I mentioned we've been at it for the last several months. I wanted to go through a few of the lessons learned uh, over Crossplane. The, the first, the main, the main headline is that it works great. Um, we are, as, a, as an organization, very happy. Um, the adoption, <laughs> if anything, has been even even uh, too fast. Uh, we now have 12 teams that are using Cruise Info in one way or another, mostly using for Spanner and PubSub and, and Redis Cache um, and some networking uh, primitives. Uh, so the adoption has been, has been great. Uh, really, um, really, I'm really pleased with that. Um, there are there are a few bumps in the road though that we've encountered, um, and also something that Bassam mentioned earlier. I'm, I was really happy uh, what I heard that kind of very very much aligned. We we work with Outbound. We like we like you guys a lot. Um, looking forward to working more uh, together. Um, testing is hard. That's 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 one thing I, I heard it mentioning a couple of times. Um, we've used a, um, a framework called Cuddle, um, C-K-U-T-T-L. Um, it's great, it works, but it's somewhat inflexible and not terribly efficient from a development perspective. Um, one of the things that we, we found is that it takes a long time. You need to set a long time out um, to wait for the cloud resources to, to be deployed. So you want to make sure that you give enough time to those for those to happen. But the test will not finish earlier if you all succeed or if something fails. You, every time you have to wait until the end of the timeout, which may be very long. And so that's not a great user experience. So we're moving now to more of the um, Kubernetes end-to-end -end, uh, testing framework. And we just started, and hopefully that should be, and also if you have that cross-plane, it's moving to that framework. So it should be, should be better. A couple of other gaps which have been encountered. Am I out of time? Just a little bit, but finish. OK. Very quickly, um, one of the key requests that we have from our users is what they call the in telephone probably is called the plan. Um, in Helm chart, you would call a dry run, is to figure out I give you a YAML. Well, tell me what you're gonna do with it because I don't want um, you to destroy my database or, or to throw away a cache that actually I care about. Um, so that's that's the big big um, uh, request. Um, the other one, talking of Helm, we use Helm very heavily. Um, and there's a there's a Helm provider uh, within Crossplane, which we like, works well. Um, no major concerns with it, um, but surfacing error conditions it's 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 challenging. Um, that's what we found. So probably more work needs needs on that on that space. That that's a big gap because it essentially prevents us from doing more uh, sophisticated things um, that you could do with a chart. And talking of error handling, surfacing error to the end user is also proven uh, challenging for us. And so I think that's that's another area when I when I heard about sound saying, oh, we will do more of the tooling within the again, ecosystem. I, I'm really happy about that. That makes me happy because that's one gap that I that we found where users are complaining. And last point is again, we've been very successful, lots of uptake, lots of adoption. People are excited about that. Always to manage expectations, making sure that we don't re re reimplement the whole of the GCP API in our cruising from um, YAML because that's really not the intention. It's an opinionated framework. We want to keep it simple. We're going to keep it consistent um, and 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 very tight um, controlled. That's it. Um, again, thank you so much for the opportunity to talk. I really appreciate that.